Okay, guys, in this section right here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at if statements. Basically, what we need to do is we need to allow the script to kind of make decisions. You know, if we, an example, let's say we're getting some records back from MySQL. We need to see, like, are there some records there so that we're going to do some processing? Are we, do we have less than five records? Do we have more than 100 records? We need to find a way to allow our code to actually ask questions and make decisions based off the answer. So with that, what we're going to do this time around is I'm going to have Logan introduce to you guys the wonderful if statement. Logan, take it away. Okay, well, let me go ahead and open up a new script and tab over and obviously syntax is if. Then we open uh, opening closing parenthesis for what we want to test. And let me just go ahead and fill, uh, block this all in. Then we start a curly brace and close one. Now let me close the, the script off. That's the basic syntax. And inside these uh, parentheses is what we want to test for. Let me go ahead and create a ve uh, variable to test. So dollar sign var. Let's make that equal 5. So we want to test var and see if, let's say, see if it equals something. So inside these uh, opening closing parentheses, we'll say if dollar sign var equals equals ooh two five. equals hmm that's because we need we're just we're testing for equality a normal equals will actually assign five to var so if we did just equals here it would be assigning var and not just testing for it. absolutely one equal symbols is an assignment operator right so we're testing and if so this an if statement returns a true or false, kind of like a yes or no. And if it returns true, it runs any code you put inside these curly braces. All right. So can you prove that to us? So okay. Let's, let's echo something out, perhaps. Let's echo. Var is say. true. So or let's just say if, or just say returned. Retweeted. All right. Fine. <laughs> var was true. You're trying to get all fancy on us, eh? All right. Var was true. So let me go ahead and save that out as just do if test.php. Save it out, load up a localhost, and if, if, all right, I'm getting there. Var was, Var was true. true. So right now, if you made it false, by, let's say, testing to see if it was equal to 4. Right, which means we definitely get false back. So what would be shown out? Uh, nothing, because there's no uh, nothing else is shown to the browser. No HTML or no other echoes. Okay. And, of uh -huh. course, nothing. So um, I guess, you know, just kind of looking at this from a complete beginner's point of view. Okay. What's going to happen? Let's say we've got some code going on. We've been doing some stuff. Everything's been running fine. Then suddenly we need to do a, a little test, and we use this if statement here, and we see that inside the open and closing curly brace, we're going to do something if the condition's true. But what do we need to do if we want code to continue after it's done? Just keep uh, just keep writing code outside of the last curly brace. Okay, so no matter what, true or false, that right. code will continue executing. Yeah, this is basically its own. Uh, it's just its own little line or our own little well couple of lines, but after it's done, and after you uh, hit this last curly brace, it's back to just normal code. So we can, like, echo out end of scr script. And so what you're saying is the end of script will always be displayed now. Right, because there's nothing, it's it's going to hit PHP, PHP is going to do an echo. And this is going to be whether this did anything or didn't, we're now outside of that last curly brace and back to normal code. Sounds pretty cool to me. Let's check it out. End of script. End of script. And if you go back in there and make the test true? True. Now, one thing is, since uh, the browser is interpreting this as HTML, it's yeah. not going to uh, see any new line here. We need to actually have an HTML BR there just to make it easier to see and put this on a new yeah, line. Yeah, otherwise it would have all just been jumbled up there. Far oh. was true. And now end of script. Isn't he just so, so fancy? So, yeah, whether this... Uh, whether this get echo line gets hit or not, it's still always going to. This is always going to be run. Okay. Now looking at this, you know, if I was completely new to programming, well, first of all, I would be slowly absorbing this, going, "Whoa, this is kind of cool." But the next thing that comes to mind is, all right, well, you've shown me how I can I can do something if this test condition that's inside those two um, parentheses up above evaluates to true. But what if it evaluates to false, and I need something to happen only if the condition is false? Okay, so only if this wasn't five, then or, or yeah, that's that the condition evaluates to false, and I need something specific to happen. Then 
if it's false. So you want something to happen whether it's true or false. Be exactly. Because right now we're only doing something so right special now it's saying if it's, it's true, true, and then it's a blank pa or a missing the line if it's false. So we want to exactly. go ahead and make it actually show the user that it's false. Right. So we can use else to do that. Ooh. Right after the last closing brace, else, and then open a new curly brace, tab over, and do something else. Echo bar. Oh, yeah, don't want to get fancy this time, eh? Nah, I'll stick to easy <laughs> typing. So, and then, of course, closing that last curly brace. So, let's so see. now we've got ourselves set up so we can do something special if it's true or if it's false, false before we continue with executing the rest of the code. That's right. So now I can set this to 4. And we test. know 5 is definitely not equal to 4. So, refresh. Bar is false. Flace. <laughs> well, flace. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes, that's... Uh, the, this line, there's one of these, one or the other, is going to get shown no matter what. Okay. I knew that would be bugging you. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Are there – you've got these blocking symbols, the curly braces over right. um, with the if and with the else. Uh, are there going to be times when people will not see those? Yes. If you only need one line of code to execute after an if statement, you can simply put it directly under the if or directly after and not completely omit the curly braces. But that means you've got to be really careful because if you're coding and you accidentally put, let's just say, two lines of code down that you expect to be executed if the condition evaluates to true but you did not use the open and closing curly brace, then what's going to happen is, is the first line will get executed if it's true, but the second line is considered to be executed no matter yeah, what. it'll get executed just the same as this echo line exactly. that's totally outside of the curly brace. But now let me ask you this. What kind of trouble will they be cruising towards if they have an else statement on after that? Then PHP is going to get a little bit mad. It's going to it's going to hit an else and... It's going to slap you! Just out in the middle of nowhere. It's, it won't accept an else just... Without an if. Yep, exactly. So we've got a bit of a problem then, and you will be fixing your code. So, um, okay, I just wanted to you know, make them aware that you could get away without using the open and closing curly brace. So what is the purpose of the open and closing curly brace? Well, it's quite simple. If you have multiple lines of code or a block of code that you need to execute if it's true, well, you have to use those. It's, that's what we're doing. We're blocking code belonging to the true portion of the if statement. And then the else is, well, the false so with that, let's go ahead, uh, Logan, and talk a little bit about some of the operators that we can use. Right now, okay. you've just shown So we've equality. been just, just seeing if it's equal to something. Yeah. What if we wanted to, like, give it a range, like, say, anything greater than 5? Okay. So you can simply use a greater than symbol. Just make this uh, – I'll leave that 4. So anything – we're checking for – just to make sure it's anything greater than 4. Okay. So if I save this and ran it, of course, 5 is greater than 4, and it evaluates to true. Now, if I set this to 5 and test it – Five is not, not greater, greater than, than five. five. So if you're testing a range and you want to include five as well, you can use greater than or equal to. So if it's equal to, obviously equal to or greater than, like it says. Very nice. So I will save. And yes, in this case, it's equal to, so it's true. Or if we set var to, say, six. Now it's not equal to, but it's greater than, but it's still true. So now you have a whole, like, infinitely many numbers that could possibly make this evaluate to true. Anything okay. greater than or equal to 5. Excellent. All right. So um, what are some other ones? I mean, obviously, we've got the quality test double equals. We've got greater than, greater than, or equal to. We've got less than and less than or equal to. Do we have anything else that's kind of fancy? Well, we can we can see if it's not equal to. If okay. we only want to, uh, to value, evaluate to true if it's not equal to a certain number. And that operator is... Exclamation point equals. So not equals. So var is not equal to five, which in this case it's equal to six, so that should evaluate to true. And that's what we've got. So go ahead and change var real quick over to five. And so now five, it's saying is five not equal to five? Well then no it's not. So because they're equal, just in case you don't know. <laughs> okay, so um what else can we show them before we move on into some more fancy stuff? Um, how about Boolean operations? Okay. So you want to test just, um... Well, first of all, people are probably going, what is a Boolean operation? It's too fancy of words. Well, what if you got, what if you want to test two things at once? In other words, two things or three things or even more need to, one needs to be true and one needs to be false, or two different conditions need to be true at the same time. Okay, so we want to make, um, let's make another variable, and then we'll just set it to where they have to match. So Excellent. dollar sign $var2 equals 
eight. And of course, you can use you could use like a string expression as well. So um, and and test that. So we're saying so if var does not equal five, so we want to increase this to where it incorporates var two. You could simply use the two pipe symbol for wait for uh, that's or for and or you can actually use the word and. Wait a minute. Okay, just so that people don't get get confused, because you just about had me for a second. You throw the two pipe symbols, then you said or, then you said and. Yeah, so that's. So the two, the and would actually be. The two and would be two ampersands. There you go. So if we wanted to do this like uh, as in as if it was C, so if I so this represents or, so or dollar sign var or, or just var one or. Hmm. Why do I keep saying that? And <laughs> yeah, the two, yeah, the two ampersands. Let's just use or a lot lately. <laughs> so, so and sorry, I'm so getting var a two off here. equals eight. And okay. again, I'm using a string expression here, so I'm putting quotes around just to show that. I mean, you you can test um, equality on anything. So in this case right here, he's saying if var is not equal to what's in or what's five. Excuse me, is not equal to five, and if uh, var2 is equal to 8, then it'll be true. Which, in this case, is false. Not because That's because the very first one is not equal to. Yep. So let's make var4. And that's definitely not equal to that, so that'll evaluate to true. The other one will evaluate to true, and you get var is true. So we're testing multiple cases. So both, so var has to be something other than, other than 5, and var2 has to be 8. Here's another quick example that I'll have Logan set up real quick that may help some of you guys see this a little bit quicker. This is great if you want to test ranges. In other words, let's say we want to make sure that var is greater than 10 but less than 20. So say var is greater than 10. This time I won't even use var 2. And you check and say var less than number 20. Absolutely. So there you've done a little setup that kind of tests a range for you. So we'll try that. Of course, right now it's four, so obviously that would be outside the range. False. And if so we it's make like it to sixteen, sixteen, and that's with that's between ten and twenty. So of course that evaluates to true. But then once you get above twenty, say twenty-two, or then even twenty actually, back to false or even twenty. Yeah, because we didn't use the less than or equal to. So if you want to be inclusive, you could do greater than or equal to or less than and equal. Equal to in that case, it would allow ten, 10 or 10 20. And twenty. Yeah, absolutely, including ten and twenty. All right, very nice. So uh, let's see, what else can we kind of throw at them? Well, that that right there is the and. That means that both of those conditions have to evaluate to true for the entire if statement to be considered true. Now we also, as Logan said a second ago, you could also type the word and in there as well. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do it, Logan, just so they've seen it. So, and there you go. Woo, real fancy. So All right. that obviously it works, and it still works fine. Now. We have the ability also to do or. So, so in other words, either or of the two conditions evaluate to true. And that is the two pipe symbol, or the or the word or. I'll do that in just a second. So if, let's say, let me go back to using the equal, so we just test for two numbers. So if var is equal to 10 or var is equal to 20. Okay. So let's set this to say 10. Try it out. True, it's equal to 10. Or let's try 15. That's not equal to either of them, so that's false. Mm -hmm. Then set it to 20. And true, true again. Very nice. All right, so uh, yeah. let's see. Again, the word or, same thing. Absolutely. So now, what do you want to show them now? We can take the testing just a little bit further if you'd like. Okay. So what if... Um, what if you had, uh, let's say, I don't know, do you want to test, uh, test just for a variable to exist or um, maybe some more advanced if blocking? I'll leave it up to you. They are also, I, I guess you may want to go ahead before we get too far away and throw the else if at them too. Okay. So, so if we wanted something to happen or in a different case, like here we did uh, – we're testing if it's 10 or 20. But either way, you can't tell if through just what the browser said, you can't tell if it was 10 or 20. It just says it was true. What if you wanted to do something different for 20? And um, in order to do that, uh, or one way to do that, would be to use else if. And else if has the opening and closing parentheses because you're testing for another condition. 
So I'm going to take this out, or let's see. Yeah, I'm going to just move this around. I'm going to take the OR out from here, and I'm going to take and cut the second test out. And let's say I'll open a curly bracer so it's keeping the same as everything else, and grab this line real quick. So say var was 10, var was 20. So if it's equal to 10, say so. If it's equal to uh, otherwise, if it's equal to 20, say so. Otherwise, just say it was false. So let me save that out and test. Var was 20, and of course 10 will hit the first one. Var was 10, and something else. Var was false. Neither of them. Okay, cool. And another thing, of course, that you can do is you can also embed if statements as well. So do another if inside. inside Absolutely. So you so can echo out one thing, and then you could turn right around and, and check another, and check something else. So I can go in here inside the the curly brace to the first if. I can s open up another if. Open closing parenthesis. So if dollar sign var two equals eight. Ooh, you better put two equals there. Equals equals. Yep. <laughs> Open. Let me tab this one over just so it's easy to see. Yeah, the tabbing is is really important for the reader to be able to look at this code and just quickly digest what block belongs to which statement. All right. So you can tell that this echo belongs to this else if this echo belongs to this if which belongs to this if. Absolutely. So so we're testing if it's ten, and then again if uh, I'm then testing the second var var if it's eight. So I'll just change this back to true to be less confusing. Save that out. Test it. And it was false because I don't have var equal to 10. All right, so var 10, so this will be true. Second var 8, so this will be true. And, of course, very true. nice. And, again, the reason, remember we just, uh, it's kind of like the same thing as that and, or you, if you, um, why would you use this other than just using an and inside of a single if? Well, what if you wanted something to happen in, in the first case and then something else happened in the second case? So if I m put another echo... So say we always want to do something in the case that uh, that, it e that it's equal to 10, but then only continue that. So, so let's say, let's echo out var was 10, but all if, um, if it was 8 also, then do an echo and just say, and var 2 was 8. Again, I'm not using the BR, so this will all echo out onto one line. And you can go ahead and embed the, you can also do an if right after that too, I mean, excuse me, an else, just to show that there's an if else all embedded. That could echo out saying that var 2 was not equal to 8. Okay. So I'm going to tab that over. And then we'll use the correct braces. Okay, so one do and var 2 was not 8. Looks good. So let me save that out check. Var was 10 and var 2 was 8. Okay. Then if we make this anything else, again this is a string so it can be pretty much anything. Var yeah. was 10 and var 2 is not 8. Yep. Very, very nice. Okay, so now do you want to, uh, I'll let you go ahead and go a little bit fancier now. Okay, now notice, let's uh, let's do some, a little bit, uh, a little bit more comparing. Let's go back to just the first if. So if var is equal to 10, well, you can also compare variables. So let's compare var1 to var2 and say var1 e equals var2. So we can test two variables. So we can change, change from here. And let's see. So let's try that out. Save var was false, as in this var 10 does not equal cat. Right. But what if, see these how, how these are different types? If I put 10 inside here, even though this is a string, let me go ahead and run it, var equals 2. So we're just looking at this first part, because all, all we're looking at now is just to make sure that this line got hit, and it did, var equals 2. So suddenly we have these two different types, so a numeric and a, and a string. And, and a string. We're comparing them. And it says they're true because it's it's um it's not r PHP isn't real picky about types of variables so as long as they contain the same thing it'll actually evaluate it's true as you just saw. But what if we get in a situation, Logan, where we absolutely have to make sure they're the same type and value? Right. There's because uh, there's certain functions that will uh, that will return a value zero to whatever. Like if you're searching inside a string to see if it contained a certain letter, 
it will return 0 being the start of the string to whatever the end is. But in this case, say you were comparing 0 to a string's 0. Or as a matter of fact, let's use, uh, let's use a new um, false. This is a, uh, a Boolean variable type, so you can set it to, uh, to true or false. But let's compare 0 and false and see how those compare. This is much closer to an example. Still and it equal. is looking. It's looking at the integer 0 and the var false as the same thing. But what if we needed to tell the difference? Because there is functions that return specifically this. It will return a range 0 to a number and false if there, was n if there was nothing found. And we need to be able to tell the difference. Here we can't. It's saying, it's saying 0 is equal to false. Now, in order to tell the difference, we need to check and see if the types are identical. To do that, we use the triple equals. Triple equals. So we save that. A zero is an integer. And see, it didn't hit that line. It just said var. Say, yeah, var was false. It didn't It didn't catch this. So it's, and again, if we put this back to a, uh, a string, and the string was said, let's say, eight. And so we got the number eight and a string with eight in it. Test. That's still false. They're not identical. They're not the same type. Very cool. So I guess that um, that's about that. Yeah, I guess that in this case right here, this will definitely be enough to get somebody that's a beginner to if statements up and running. And as a matter of fact, you're going to see that we're going to start using it here real soon and just about all the rest of the code that we're going to be writing because making conditional decisions like this becomes quite important. Anything else you want to add, Logan? Nuts. That's pretty much it. Okay. So thanks a lot, guys. See ya.